Thank you, Madam Speaker. I call Maureen Pugh. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I stand tonight to speak against the residential tenancies prohibiting letting fees amendment bill in its second reading. Madam Speaker, I call this the bill of unintended consequences. Right. Now, the, pro the problem that the government set out to fix was the upfront fees that tenants are required to pay when they are moving into a new tenancy agreement. And they are presumably too high and are, and we concede, a real barrier to some people. So, for the record, the upfront fees are usually uh, four weeks bond, four weeks rent as bond, two weeks rent in advance, and one week including all plus GST as a letting fee. So given the average rent across New Zealand, those fees actually do come to just under $4,000 if you are a new tenant seeking a new tenancy. Now remember this is an average, but across New Zealand and in the great electorate of West Coast Tasman, uh, those uh, letting fees would be so much less because the weekly rents are lower, so in some cases they'll be lower by half. But there's no argument across this House that uh, there, one week's uh, rent for a letting fee is a lot of money for some people to have to find, especially those first-time renters. But with those tenants that are actually moving house, moving into a new tenancy, then they already have their bond in place, they already have their two weeks rent paid in advance. And we actually heard from one submitter in Auckland, a very canny tenant, who as he moves around, he says as he's paid his two weeks rent in advance, when he gets towards the end of his tenancy, he doesn't pay the two weeks rent that's owing at the end. He banks that money and he's got it ready for his next tenancy and the only fee that he does pay for is the letting fee. Now in the select committee process we heard 187 submissions and we heard 41 oral submissions in both here in Wellington and in Auckland and I think very fair to say that those submissions were quite polarised. So those people who would be paying a letting fee of course were supporting the bill and those who were landlords uh, or property managers were in general opposing this bill. And, it just, and taking up um, Honourable Ron Mark's point earlier on about, um, about the blunt tool that the letting fee is, it is fair and we, we did ask some of the property managers how they came by this fee and it has just evolved. There was no logic behind it. So in some cases we had in one, we had in one street, the example that was used was you could have a million dollar house and a $500,000 house because they attract you know, quite a variance in rents that the letting fee would be quite different and could be the same amount of work involved. And so the simple solution is to have a fee for service. The actual cost that is involved by the letting agent for the work that is undertaken. And we know that there's a huge amount of work undertaken. Um, as, um, on, as Simon O'Connor mentioned earlier, there is the advertising of the property, there is the showing of the property, open homes, etc., the vetting of potential tenants, the credit checks, the paperwork that goes into the tenancy agreement and lodging of the bond, responding to the unsuccessful applicants, and um, also the um, viewing outside of hours. And we did hear from some pro property managers who said they can arrange for, to suit people's schedules, they can go after hours or on weekends, but one of the challenges they have is that some people are maybe looking at multiple properties, find one, don't let the agent know, and they're left with a no-show. There is a real cost to letting a property. So um, the select committee uh, did deal with that issue about uh, the transparency of the letting fees and it, it, it was a blunt tool, it has evolved over time and I do think that a fee for service is the, probably the fairest way to resolve it. Um, however, uh, this bill prevents fees of any kind now being applied by any agent of any sort. So there is no ability now, if this bill is passed, for any fees to be incurred. And that is the cause and effect. 
Now, we talk, we've heard talk tonight um, from some of my colleagues on this side of the House about the impact of increased rent. And there is no way that a, a, a landlord is going to be able to absorb that cost. And it's like comparing it to the, the cost of increased transportation. A truck has to fill up its tank of gas, and it may be costing $50 or $100 more per tank. So everything that goes on that truck now goes up in price because we have to recover the cost. It's the law of cause and effect. So the rents will go up, Madam Chair. And we have heard from submitters that, that approximately, now we've got 34% of New Zealand households are now in rental properties. That's about 589,000 of them. 90% of them are owned by mum and dad investors, 90%. 50% of them um, are managed by property ma managers, and only 50% of them actually charge a letting fee. So this bill um, does set out to um, reduce the upfront costs. But let's say those um, costs are passed on to the tenant. We've heard it tonight that the increase in rent is inevitable. But the ones it penalises the worst are those people who are stable in long-term rentals. Now, one of the consequences, these unintended consequences, is so if landlords are expected to absorb this cost, what's going to happen to a tenant who leaves their tenancy early, wants to pull out of their lease agreement, their tenancy agreement? Well, if a landlord has to keep absorbing that cost of letting the property, he's going to say, no, you're going to pay me out the term of your lease or you're going to stay there because I'm not going to keep absorbing the cost of letting this property. The law of unintended consequences. And Madam Speaker, I'd just also like to point out to the House that landlords don't kick out good tenants. They want good tenants in their properties because these for 90% of the rentals in this country are owned by mum and dad investors. They want their properties looked after and they want good tenants. Now, one of the other um, issues that we dealt with as a select committee was around the, um, the cumulative effects of legislation. And for some of the landlords that we're hearing about who are now exiting the rental market, it's because of the cumulative effect of this legislative changes. So we are, we are hearing about the Residential Tenancies Act, and that's going to bring in some major change for the market. The Healthy Homes Guarantee Act, that's real cost to landlords, and rightly so, bears the risk of the capital gains tax, and the recent court decision around um, the unintentional damage and the consequences of that. So one of the other unintended consequences of this bill, and I know this because I have spoken to people in my electorate um, just recently when I took the Honourable Chris Finlayson on a trip um, through Tasman, is that people are finding it is much more lucrative to turn to Airbnb and quit the rental market altogether. This is getting too tough, the regulation is too tight, and they are now finding Airbnb is a very lucrative solution for them, and they're out of it. And even Trade Me, Trade Me is even saying there are 3% less rentals year on year that are being marketed on their, on their website. The property investors, they say it's too much too soon, and their members have even told them that they are now willing to sell out of their rental properties. 30 per cent have said they would sell out. Now, one of the other um, issues that we did deal with um, on, select, on the select committee was around the, uh, the time frame of enacting this legislation. And we, we had some concerns. Originally in the bill, it was three months after the date in which it gains royal assent, which was quite standard. Uh, the government members on the select committee have shortened that to the 12th of December. We do have some concerns that there will be landlords out there who self-manage their properties who will not be aware of this and may inadvertently uh, fall into the risk of having to pay the $1,000 penalty for charging fees. Uh, Madam Speaker, in summary, 
The alternative is to make the letting fees a fee for service. Uh, re-letting re -letting, it does take time and it does cost. National does not support this bill. I call Priyanka Radhakrishnan. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise with absolute delight.